On this channel, we've covered guest characters in the Mortal Kombat series, along with costumes that change the appearance dramatically. So there's one more thing I haven't talked about yet, celebrity tie-in costumes and characters. We'll be ranking the celebrity tie-ins from the worst to the best. Good morning, afternoon, and evening everyone, Nick here, and welcome to or welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at the celebrity tie-in or celebrity guest character costumes and times real world celebrities portrayed MK characters in the game. These are judged based on the likeness and how well it matches the character they play, along with their overall performance as a whole. Huge thing that I want to state, the list is more focusing on celebrities in Hollywood or TV, not voice actors. So voice actors such as Steven Blue. Patrick Seats or the wonderful Karen Strassman will not be included because they are voice actors. If they had a promotion where it was advertised a real world celebrity played them, such as a trailer or panel at a convention, that's how they will be included. Also, no guest characters, I've already talked about that before, and that's different since the actor is already playing the character tied to them, such as Sylvester Stallone coming back as Rambo, or even J.K. Simmons reprising the role for Omni-Man, or John Cena doing the likeness and voice for Peacemaker. I'll be sure to state something positive about each one of these inclusions, even the ones that I rank low. Without further ado, let's open the MK Multiverse, look at the celebrity portrayals, and rank each of these from the worst to the best. Alright, let's get the easy one out of the way. The bottom spot goes to Dimitri Vegas as Sub-Zero in Mortal Kombat 11. I already talked pretty in-depth about this one in all Sub-Zero costumes ranked, which you can check out above, but let me give you the TLDR version of this. Vegas was selected as he made a few tracks to promote Mortal Kombat 11. In return, the team made a Sub-Zero skin with EDM elements along with his voice and likeness. People have heavily criticized Vegas' voice acting, myself included, but he's not a native English speaker or trained in voice acting. To find out whether you are dark or light. Overall, this costume was just a big missed opportunity. If you want to know more about this costume and a lot more of my in-depth thoughts because I don't want to repeat myself, check out all Sub-Zero costumes ranked. Number 9 goes to the one the internet has been blasting for the past couple of months now, Megan Fox as Natara in Mortal Kombat 1. Now I'm going to do something rarely anyone has done for this portrayal, and that's say something positive about it. For starters, the team did a good job having her likeness resemble her. The face details are there, and it looks nice. Many of my friends who rarely play the series immediately knew that it was her just by looking at it. Along with that, there are a handful of intros where Natara sounds menacing and the voice acting is honestly not bad. I'll steal Detusha and kill you with it. You are welcome to try. However, plenty of the intros sound less like a Viternian and more like I'm just listening to Megan Fox. Little emotion in her performance. You outworlders believe yourself so superior. Or there's just moments where she's really overacting to compensate, but it comes off as pretty bad in performance. Don't I scare you in the least? This honestly came off more as a marketing gimmick rather than a great opportunity if you ask me. Unfortunately, a lot of her performance is very bland or pretty bad, especially when you compare it to the majority of the Mortal Kombat roster. Now I'm not supposed to celebrities portraying our characters, but for future titles, NRS, please be better than this. And speaking of marketing gimmicks with pretty rough performances, number 8 goes to Ronda Rousey's take on Sonya Blade from Mortal Kombat 11. When this was first announced in January 2019, I was a bit optimistic. The footage from the Ronda Rousey as Sonya trailer seemed pretty pleasing and the lines that we heard didn't sound bad. On top of it, she really sounded excited to play the role. But similar to Megan Fox, it's painfully clear that she's not trained in voice acting, so a lot of her lines come off sounding very flat in delivery. You're hiding things from us. Allies don't keep secrets. However, to me, this oddly fits this version of Sonya for me. Sure, she's no Trisha Helfer of Sonya from MKX, but it kind of gets the job done. And yeah, it is a slight bummer that the face model doesn't resemble Ronda Rousey. My guess is that she didn't want to see herself get mutilated in a hyper-violent way. Overall, this one does get a lot of hate, but I don't think it's that bad. And at the time, she was the only celebrity in this game that wasn't a voice actor as the game would see more with some future DLC. Not amazing, but not terrible either. Personally, just stay in the ring, Rhonda. Sonya 
from one Sonya who doesn't give a damn about her reputation to that Veronica Vaughn, Bridget Wilson Sampras from the MK95 movie in MK11. That Veronica Vaughn is one piece of a. Whoops, wrong clip, my bad. You're hiding things from us. Allies don't keep secrets. She was the one of three costumes we got in the movie skin pack for MK11, and this was the biggest surprise to see her return as she retired from acting in 2008. Instead of going with her military look from the beginning parts of the movie, the team used her outfit from the fight scene with Kano, which was a great choice as it stands out against the rest of Sonya's costumes in this game. On top of it, it's good to have Sampras back in the booth doing lines too, sounding much better than Ronda Rousey if you ask me. Personally, I don't find her the most expressive when it comes comes to her acting, but it's a real treat to have her return and play the character one more time. If you don't agree, she'll just give you a break. Okay. Making their way into the ring is that son of a bitch oh! who played Dylan, Carl Weathers as Jackson MKX. You son of a bitch. Included in the Predator and Prey bundle, we got the Commando Johnny skin, that terrible scorpion costume, and Carl Weathers as Jax. Outside of changing the face model, Weathers even recorded some voice lines, and he does a pretty great job with his performance. I don't want Jackie on your team. On top of the face change, they even made a change to his costume, which was actually my biggest criticism if you ask me. For whatever reason, he has green Jack's arms instead of the outfit he rocked in The Predator. If they managed to change his design to resemble the look from the film, like giving him his vest with the hat, this easily could have landed a few placements higher. Overall, a fun treat for fans of action movies and Jax Briggs. I'm too old for this shit. Entering the top five, we're going full circle with this blood sport. <laughs> see, see what I did there? I made, I made, I made the reference with Jean Claude Van Damme as Johnny Cage in Mortal Kombat One. Honestly, this is dream come true material, even if it isn't all that perfect or all that amazing. Sure, it's amazing we finally get Jean Claude Van Damme in a Mortal Kombat game portraying the character that spoofed him, but it's kind of bogged down by his voice acting. To be fair, this does look a lot like Van Damme from Blood. Sport, outfit and all. There are some criticisms out there that the likeness doesn't look too much like him, but I disagree as they're using older reference images rather than how he looks currently. And sure, he may not be a thespian in comparison to Andrew Bowen, the current Johnny Cage voice actor. I finally meet Hollywood Boulevard Johnny. Fans love me. Do you know what they'll pay for a selfie? But I can appreciate the JCVD is being his own version of Johnny we all imagined wanting to see before it became the Mortal Kombat we know and love. This is just fan service I welcome and adore. Yeah, bring it! Boom! Mwah. Johnny Cage wins. Number four, we've got Kelly Hu as Lee Mei from Mortal Kombat 1. For those who are unaware of who this is, Kelly Hu has been acting for quite some time in projects you probably didn't even know that she was involved in. Her credits include Lee Mei and Madame Bo from Mortal Kombat 1, along with voicing Devora in MKX and MK11, Ashra in the recently released Cage Match movie, along with several other credits in TV and movies such as Lady Deathstrike in X2, The Sorceress in The Scorpion King, and China White in Arrow. For a character who's been playably absent since the PS2 era, this was such an amazing return with a badass portrayal. She brings quite a lot to the character. With her experienced voice acting, it really helps with her in the booth do some great delivery. Sundo needs me more. I will prevail, Earthrealmer. This fight is more important to me than you can ever know. The team did an amazing job with her face model too, really resembling her as well. Though she doesn't have a large prominence in the story, but when she's there, her performance made me happy Lee May Lee made her return. Great work, Kelly. I'm happy to see you bring justice to a character we needed to see return. Lee May wins. With only two actors portraying Johnny Cage and two for Sonya, there can be only one. When it comes to our third spot, being Christopher the Highlander Lambert as Raiden in MK11. The second of three movie skins covered, and this one is a real treat. Christopher Lambert, who played Raiden in the 1995 movie, reprises the role in-game. His voice still sounds the same as it did back in the day, and even the lines and references to the old movies sound even better with Lambert's voice. My move is not to 
concern. The clothing was even perfectly implemented into this, along with the model and hair. We rarely ever see Raiden with his hood off, so it was nice having this be the only opportunity that the costume would break that tradition. Overall, one of my favorite movie skins, easily deserving its placement. Our runner-up goes to the third costume from the movie pack, Lyndon Ashby's Johnny Cage. What are they, baby paparazzi? I guess you can really say this makes up for Lyndon Ashby missing out in MK Annihilation in 97, and returning after stepping away from the character after 20 years, he sounds better than before. His performance is on point. I'd even say it's rivaling Andrew Bowen's Cage from the same game. I need an answer, it's killing me. What's the trouble, Double Double? Are we Johnny Cage's? Or Johnny's cage. The outfit was a perfect choice, making it stand out from all of Johnny's wardrobe from this entire game, even if one of the alternate colors looks a little too close to a groovy character that missed out in MK11. Overall, one of the series' best celebrity guest appearances. Johnny Cage wins. <laughs> Obvious number one is obvious, but it goes to the actor most associated with the character, Kari Hiroyuki Tagawa as Shang Tsung in MK11. I mean, come on, it just has to be. Ever since the Mortal Kombat movie from the 90s came out, fans have been dying to see Tagawa reprise the role in an MK game, and thanks to MK11, they finally delivered. The face model is on point, and when you play the story, He's so expressive and acts so much like the character from the movie. It's almost like all of the lines were just written for him. On top of it, I feel his voice acting rivals some of the MK veteran voice actors. He just nails it with his performance. I will torment you for eternity. Do your worst, Shang Tsung. And now a taste of things to come. Takawa's performance just feels like they took the character right from the movie and placed it into the game. When they announced Shang Tsung would be played by Tagawa, I knew we were in for a special treat. We all know that Shang Tsung is very well known for shapeshifting, but Tagawa literally transformed into the character. And with that, Kari Tagawa's Shang Tsung is the best guest celebrity performance in the MK series, hands down. Your soul is mine. And there you have my ranking of the celebrity tie-ins from the worst to the best. This was a ranking I thought about doing for some time, and I really hope that you liked it. Which celebrity guest was your favorite? What's your top 5 or your top 10? Share it down below and I'll get back to you. My list isn't the right one, it's just mine, and I'd love to hear yours. As I promised, I've got plenty of rankings covering the Mortal Kombat series coming up soon, along with more fighting games to be covered in 2024. So subscribe and ring the bell to stay up to date along with dropping a like on this video as it helps my channel grow. We've got one more ranking for this year, so come back in a couple of weeks for the final MK ranking video of 2023. It'll be quite the fun one ranking and covering MK's legacy. Until then, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Nick, and remember to smile and have an amazing rest of your day. Fight.